Paul and I are here to talk about the uh, Town of Lake George Septic Initiative, which was started um, a few years ago after um, some al algal investigations uh, along Diamond Point Road, uh, Diamond Point Beach, and some of the areas up north in the town uh, were discussed with uh, some of the officials. And um, the Board of Health uh, was pretty instrumental in starting this program uh, once these things um, came, came to light. Um, once they started getting uh, more and more serious uh, in areas throughout the whole town, uh, Lakeshore, not just in Diamond Point, um, we we're seeing very high levels of uh, organic pollution. <clears throat> so in 2013, uh, the Consolidated Board of Health, led by Supervisor Dennis Dickinson, uh, set up this septic initiative program with an um, initial goal, goal of basically inventorying all these septic systems, private septic systems, along the lakeshore uh, within 500 feet of the, of the mean high water and within 100 feet of uh, class AA streams. Um, again, just to inventory, mark what they have, um, the components of the septic system, the age of the septic system, whether or not they were reviewed and approved by a uh, regulatory agency, um, and things like how many bedrooms they're servicing and whatnot. Um, the original intent of this program, aside from the inventory, uh, was to basically reach out to municipalities in the basin, um, try to get them on board with what we were doing, and to make it uh, hopefully a, a basin-wide or watershed-wide program at some point in the future. Um, since that, the program has evolved uh, vastly, and that's uh, partially thanks to a grant that we received from uh, DEC. Um, I want to say it was the end of 2015 we were awarded. Uh, we really started ramping up the project last year when we brought the fund on. Um, we have some subcontractors helping us like Chazen and uh, Karina uh, with the algal testing. So this is just kind of an overview of the inventory that's been started and um, continued with the fund, um, we're collecting everything, like I said earlier, from age of system, components of the system, uh, whether or not they were inspected and, and uh, approved by engineers or people in my office, um, when the last time they were pumped out was, um, other things like uh, how close they are to water bodies, if we have that information available. So, the pod project boundaries, as I mentioned earlier, uh, 500 feet within the mean high water and 100 feet um, from class AAS streams. So you can see kind of a snippet of a map which came out of uh, phase one. We have four phases in this program. They extend uh, all, the all the way around the lake shore and do not include the areas where we have our Caldwell Sewer District. So this is a snippet of the phase one Diamond Point area. It shows uh, Diamond Point Road, that brook going up uh, adjacent to the road is Smith Brook. So we're looking at all the properties um, within that shaded blue area. I mentioned earlier that the program uh, continuation could not have been done without the help of a grant from the state. Um, at the end of 2015, we were awarded uh, just over $100,000 to continue this program. Um, we expanded it, like I said earlier, from an inventory to um, a more robust program. There are six major tasks as, as part of this uh, program, and it's something that's very easily transferable. If you are from a municipality, if you're an elected official, if you're a zoning officer, uh, if you're a planner from anywhere um, around the lake, p please feel free to reach out to me, uh, Chris, or even Paul, and we can um, sit down and discuss or, or shoot through email uh, ways to get a program similar to this off the ground in your municipality. So as I mentioned, the inventory was the start of the program. Um, what we've come to add into this uh, initiative since winning this grant um, is uh, a very detailed uh, mapping. And I will let Paul talk about that when he comes up here. But um, in short, it's a site suitability analysis of the properties within our, our initiative boundaries and our analysis of the limitations on where you can put the systems. Um, and again, I'll let Paul get into that later, but it's, uh, it's, it's pretty groundbreaking stuff in terms of planning for septic systems, especially in the Adirondack Park. Um, so we're, hope this, we're hoping this model takes off and, and other people start to use it. 
the other aspects of this initiative, municipal outreach, the reason we're all here today, um, again, we're going to try to get a couple public workshops up and training sessions for uh, installers, manufacturers, contractors, engineers to attend. We've held a few in the past. We're going to try to continue to do that with the help of the fund. Um, another part of this was the algal sampling we were talking about, uh, the water, water quality analysis. Uh, Karina is helping us with that. We did have some testing last summer. We're going to have some more testing this summer. Um, and, and the purpose of that is really to try to correlate um, any organic pollution or, or factors found I in these tests and how they can link up to uh, potential high priority areas that have um, many old or substandard septic systems. The last two pieces of, of the program, one has already been completed uh, as of last year, was um, the update of our town code in terms of septic. Uh, we had a pretty um, antiquated septic code. Uh, it was called 8180 for those of you that know it. We recently, um, not really recently, but we finally got it through recently, um, undertook an endeavor to update our code to match uh, the state 75A. We worked hand in hand with the APA engineers um, to get that through. Um, it really is the 75A plus our local, um, our local controls, variants, procedures, all that. Uh, as well as Q4 from the APA uh, regulations embedded into it. The last piece of the program, um, which is again part, part of the reason that we're here today, is we, we grouped up with the fund, we started this partnership, and not only are they administering the program for us and helping us run the whole initiative and, and hopefully into the future run the initiative, um, they are also, as Dennis mentioned earlier, contributing seed money. Uh, at the end of this program, or at the end of the report period, once we develop an analysis um, of the inventory, of the mapping, we are going to find high priority areas along the lakeshore, um, most commonly the areas with very small lots um, and high, high built out areas. And we're going to identify those priority areas for septic funding for, for up upgrades and replacements of the systems that might be in need of that. So this is just a quick little overview of where we're at with the tasks. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the inventory was started a couple years ago. We are uh, evolving it. We're filling it out. We're getting all the information through surveys. We're uh, doing our best to start schedule some uh, inspections of the systems that we don't know much about. Um, we're also going to try to uh, follow up with the remaining property owners on things like pump outs and, and other information that they might be able to provide us. Uh, so before we jump into some of the other information, I'm gonna have Paul come up here to go over the site suitability mapping. It is uh, probably, I would say, the, the major task of the, of the initiative right now. Um, it will be kind of an overarching part of the analysis and it really is gonna let us understand where our problem areas in the town are um, and hopefully, like I said earlier, it can translate and uh, be brought over to other municipalities for them to understand where their high, high priority areas are too. Yep. <clears throat> Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Uh, again, my name is Paul Cummings. I'm with the Chasen Companies. And as was mentioned, we've been helping with uh, this phase of, uh, of the project, um, which involves a lot of GIS analysis, and, and I, I feel a little comfortable today with all the technical conversation that's going on. I was a little worried that talking about and getting into the details of GIS might be a little too, uh, too uh, technical, but I think actually we're, we're lower than some of the technical analysis that's going on. Also, who knew that a septic summit would be talking about sex, drugs, and the only thing we're missing is rock and roll. It's a little awkward, though, because my mother's here, so, uh, so that, you know, kind of awkward. Anyway. Uh, the, the GIS mapping process has ultimately evolved into a priority uh, mapping process. Um, as, you, as Dan had mentioned, uh, there's, you know, I think down the road the idea is that there's some effort to provide some sort of incentive or assistance. And so if, if you're going to be spending money, you know, you want to do that intelligently. And so this mapping process is an effort to do just that. 
And so it, it simply put, uh, I'm not going to read to all these, there's been a, basically a five-step process that we're going through. And the first was to uh, just do a simple existing conditions mapping. So what, what are the areas within 500 feet of the shoreline and, uh, and, and stream corridors? Where are steep slopes? What are the soil characteristics? Using GIS level data, this is all often uh, available data by various state, federal agencies are created by various non-for-profits or institutions of higher learning. In some instances, we've generated using those layers, uh, that information, but basically an existing conditions analysis. Um, we then, uh, as was mentioned, there's been sampling that's been conducted around the, uh, the lake shoreline in the town of Lake George. We've been helping to map that. So where those sample locations took place were GPS. Uh, information was gathered at each of those sites and obviously the, the, uh, the lab results were integrated to that and we were able to map those uh, where those where those locations of those samples look like uh, on a two-dimensional map and then be able to color code some of the results and, and we'll, some of the terminology uh, that you've heard earlier that was talked about uh, like Palmer index etc was then utilized um, we then uh, conducted a, the site suitability analysis. And I use the term site suitability analysis because that's the technical program term uh, in GIS, but ultimately it's this priority analysis. Where, where, if given all these different variables, would you, would you want to focus further research and investigation, ultimately maybe assistance? Um, uh, as Dan pointed out, there's been a, con a concerted effort uh, surveying property owners um, to, to get an idea of what's on their site. Uh, to figure out what exactly is happening on any given uh, on any given uh, property, and so ultimately, when you put that all together, you have all this information related to um, uh, what might be more conducive or less conducive to an onlet septic system, coupled with information that's at the parcel level, um, what you know how a system might be performing, or some information about it. And when you put them together, hopefully, as hopefully I'll show you here in a minute, uh, you'll be able to make some wise decisions about um, what it is you want to do in the future. So here's just some simple mapping. Again, steep slopes, uh, various soil properties. I'll talk about uh, the next slide here, uh, more specifically what was, what was mapped. And then some of uh, the sampling locations in and around uh, the, the shoreline in the town of Lake George. Uh, here, here's a chart on the left-hand side. You'll see all the, the data layers that we, that we gathered. So it's things like steep slopes, depth of bedrock. I mean, these are all things when we were evaluating what we should gather, we were, we were looking at, hey, what are the onlet septic system requirements in New York State and in this area? You know, what, what are the criteria for slopes, for example? Um, and so we use that to map where things were good and where things maybe were not so good. And, and we, we sort of put them all together. So that's on the left-hand side. Uh, you'll see that I referenced that Palmer index. So that's an example of the sample point that we also map. And trophic is another uh, uh, indices that we mapped in the sample. Um, you see the bottom one, KSAT, that's really about permeability. So what's the permeability qualities of soils? And so we, we've put all this information together. I should add also proximity to water bodies, whether it be wetland or the lake itself or, or stream. And we coded it, which is that, that center uh, um, column there, basically assigning it a zero from one value, whether it's, hey, if, you're pres if, the, if that feature that's less favorable is present or not. And we made it a z simple zero uh, through one rating. And then for the model, uh, and this will all make sense here in a minute, uh, we assigned a weighting, uh, basically where we said, hey, in, when we're looking at these things, think of yourself as whether it be an engineer or a contractor, and you're starting to think about what type of system you might have to do to get it approved or how it should be appropriately designed. What are really some of the most important variables to think about? And so again, for example, permeability, uh, the KSAT value, we weighted it higher. Um, some of our other results we weighted higher as well because they're just more important if we're thinking about how to prioritize future funding and investment. Uh, for those of you who are GIS users, this is what the, the model actually looks like. These are all the various inputs. I won't get to in detail, but ultimately you're converting polygon line data into raster data and then converting that uh, into a reclass of coding that data as I showed you based on that that uh, table that we just showed pr previously and then we put it into where it all converges at the end there into a raster calculator that assigns the weighting of those various variables and then what the end result is is a map that looks something like this where it color codes and we can tell we can assign whatever color coding we want in terms of reds and greens and blues we use a green to red spectrum here and, and in this instance, red 
is uh, an area that under our current draft model that we're doing, we're still working on it, we're still tweaking it, we're still QAQCing it, but where you might say, hey, look, this is an area that we think we should prioritize based on all those variables and inputs that we, we, we've, we've looked at. Uh, where it's green or, or a lighter color, there, that area may be less of a priority. It's, so for example, in a less priority area, you might have good soil properties, you're away from a water body, there's not steep slopes, these sorts of things. It doesn't take into consideration the existing building that's there, the property ownership, it's just those environmental conditions or existing conditions that we showed you earlier. Uh, where it's red, however, you're starting to see, based on this model, this draft model approach, again, we're, we're QAQ seeing it and, and reviewing it, would show where, hey, look, these are where a lot of variables may be present or and or uh, some of our most heavily weighted or most important variables. So that Palmer index, for example, hey, we have a sample that showed a high, uh, and I'm not going to pretend to know all these numbers, but where it's concerning the levels that were, were, were found. Also, the permeability of that soil nearby may be uh, in, in, you know, not uh, conducive to uh, uh, just a standard on uh treatment system, uh, and those sorts of things. And so you can see as you start point, putting this all together, where you might think about prioritizing. But that's only half the, the equation. As Dan had mentioned, um, that the idea is that we're, we're taking this, cert, this um, property owner survey uh, information. And what we're doing now is we're going to merge. So if you recall that table that Dan was showing, we have a portion of it on the right-hand side there. And then the underlying GIS parcel data. So for those of you who have ever been on a county website, with parcel data, you know you can click on that property and it pulls up all sorts of information. Well, that's GIS. And so we have uh, uh, unique identifiers for properties, uh, which is on the left-hand side, it's your parcel ID number. Well, we've done that with the survey as well. We're tracking that, that's our unique case number. So we can do a joins and relates based on the survey results. We can joins and relates with our property data. And what does that do for us? In the long term, and, and we're, we're going to be able to make a map based on the results of that survey. We're going to be able to say, hey, computer, tell me where people have identified that their system's over a certain uh, you know, number of years old. Where might uh, be someone who self-reported, mind you, uh, that th their system's in poor condition, for example. And we're going to be able to map all these things. And as I said, go back and overlay that with that model. And when you put the two things together, you start seeing this becomes a pretty powerful tool. You'll be able to see, hey, I've got a, a failing system, perhaps, an age system, a system that's just got a giant question mark. And it corresponds with an area that, based on our model, is certainly uh, an area that we want to further investigate anyway, based on the sampling and the existing conditions. And that there is hopefully going to be the underlying uh, base of information to start going out and doing this further uh, research, outreach, and all the other good things that I think Dan's going to follow up here. So thanks, and I'll turn it back to Dan. Thanks, Paul. <clears throat> so um, I think most of you can see how, how the program is starting to come together. We're, we're using uh, the scientific evidence that we're coming up with, and we're trying to get it mapped digitally so that we can understand the geographic areas in our town and along our water body um, that are the highest areas of concern. As I mentioned earlier, the fund is going to help us um, with, with potential replacements for the properties in the high, high priority areas. Um, some of the findings that we've come across uh, since you know doing the inventory, since collecting the surveys from people um, who are self-reporting, um, you know the concerns aside from the cesspools that we've heard a couple times today, old metal tanks um, that are maybe corroding, um, potential problems with soil treatment areas, um, we know that there's a good 10% um, in, in this 500 foot from Lake George and 100 foot from streams uh, that are in potential need of retrofit or complete replacement. And we're hoping that this program will identify the majority of those and then the fund and or other sources down the road can help homeowners to replace um, at least some of the burden. So an update on the outreach, um, like I said earlier, we started uh, kind of doing training sessions. We had a few at town hall. We were planning on having some public workshops, inviting residents from the town, inviting adjacent municipalities. Um, and then, you know, we came up with this idea for the septic summit. It is uh, kind of the first of its kind in the area. We're hoping to continue it. 
uh, in, into future years. And we really think um, we're going to be able to, you know, coalesce some groundbreaking stuff at this event in, in future years. So moving forward, we are going to uh, finish the phase uh, two, three, and four uh, inventory and analysis. We are going to uh, prepare a final report, which will uh, coalesce everything that we've looked at, the inventory, the rankings, the mapping, uh, the algae sampling, the correlation between those, uh, as well as the impact that those will have on um, the properties that need to replace. We are hoping to do long-term water and algae monitoring. Uh, monitoring. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff continuing into the future is really going to be dependent on fund, funds that we may or may not have. Uh, we're hoping that the state kind of um, joins us in this partnership uh, to assist with that long-term uh, goal. Uh, like I said earlier a few times, the fund is going to help us to uh, assist some homeowners with system replacement. Um, I'll let Chris or Eric uh, describe the details of that, but uh, as as far as we're concerned, I think it's 50% match up to a certain amount, uh, which will help uh, many homeowners. And again, uh, developing a Lake George watershed-wide or basin-wide management strategy, taking this initiative around the lake, at least to a few municipalities on, on the western basin, uh, eastern basin, you know, some of those areas don't have uh, zoning or regulatory control, but we're hoping that we can get this to be something that is looked at by everybody because whether or not you have regulatory control, you have houses that have septic systems and you have impacts from those. So if anyone wants to reach out to um, Paul or I about the program, obviously you all have Chris's card um, in your packet. Uh, feel free to reach out to us uh, through our emails or phone numbers. I'd be happy to talk to you about the program. Um, we are planning on coming around, I think, to a few municipalities in the future and, and doing outreach to elected officials and former zoning administrators and officials. So uh, we'll keep that in the works and 